everybody, it's Aubrey from Drafted, and this is a really fun episode of The Daily Draft. Today, I have Colin Johnny Lunas. Sounds like two names, but it's one, and he's a <laughs> senior technical recruiter at Cargaroos. We're on the patio right now, so Ooh. thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Of Appreciate course. It. This is going to be super fun. So, Colin actually has his own LinkedIn video series. We'll plug it at the end, um, but tell us a little bit about yourself and your background as a recruiter. Totally, totally. So I got into recruiting probably four or five years ago. I started out on the agency side at a company called Tavner. Worked there for six months, you know, learning the ropes, nice. figuring out like what technical recruiting actually was. Uh, left there to go internal, went to Tapjoy, where I was at for four years. And I learned quite a bit at Tapjoy. I started as a sourcer. So really bare bones, didn't know too much, kind of like, they'd be like, oh, recruit an engineer. I'd be like, what does an engineer even do? Um, so I started to like grow with the company. After about six months, we went through a reorg. And with that reorg, I was the only one that really knew how to recruit afterwards. We had laid off three of our recruiters. Mm -hmm. My manager was about to go on maternity leave. So I was really just kind of like fumbling day after day to figure it out, faking it till I make it, yeah. per se. Um, eventually, my manager left on maternity leave, and when she returned, went to Facebook. Really proud of her. Really great manager. Um, but after that, I wanted to obviously focus on improving the company and growing it back because a reorg really hurts morale. So for it was 2017. I was the only recruiter. I've been recruiting for about a year and a half. And I really had to dive deep into engineering, products, sales, finance. And I always felt like I was kind of a piano lesson ahead. Um, so throughout 2017, we built the company back. Uh, and it was really good. We were on a you know, path towards profitability. We achieved it. So 2017 was like a really big year in terms of my career. After that, I got the opportunity to move into management and start building out my own team. Hired some really awesome sourcers that grew into recruiters themselves. Um, and after about a year of doing that, I decided, okay, I want to take a step back, focus on planning my wedding, a little bit less than focusing on recruiting, and I came over to Car Cruise, so that's where I'm at now. Awesome. Well, congrats. Car Cruise is a really awesome company. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right now, Car Cruise is pretty, like, rapidly growing, oh, I yeah. would say. Definitely. Right? And definitely. that definitely has its challenges. You know, what are some of the challenges that you're running into? And how do you withstand, or is it something that you really embrace, you're all about? For sure. So, as you said, we are growing rapidly. I believe this year we had like 400 people at the beginning of the year, and now we're close to 900. So with that, you know, rapid growth, there's a little bit of the Wild West aspect in there. But it's also, we have a really, really high bar. So getting talent through the pipeline can mm -hmm. be difficult. So at least for me, I've been here for two months. Initially, like, learning what that high bar represented and like the kind of talent that the company is looking for was my initial investment. Once I started to figure that out, trying to like hone it a little bit, figure out, okay, like how can I better present the company? How can I better present these candidates to give everyone the full picture? So I think like as we grow and scale, it's really important to make sure that you're doing justice to both the, the company as a whole, but also the recruiting process. You wanna like bring in like talent enhancers to the culture. Um, you don't want to just like bring in a monoculture and just recruit the same person that works. So like trying to always figure that out and flow with the whole diversity and initiative uh, program that we're trying to initiate as well. I think that's really important. Yeah, I really like when people say um, culture add mm -hmm. instead of culture fit. Definitely. So that's, I feel like that's exactly what you're saying to me, which is cool. Oh, for sure. Really awesome. Um, and so with this rapid growth, you know, in coming into... You've, you've just started here like about eight weeks ago so for yourself and what do you believe is it really important do you think to to network within your company oh definitely um, and does this help you get some people in the door for sure i mean one of the biggest selling points for me joining car Gruz was the fact that my old college roommate was on the engineering team uh, also named colin also has the same middle name joseph wow uh, so shout out to colin dietrich out there um, but when I joined uh, Cargrews, like Colin was sort of my entry point into meeting the engineers. Because a big thing with like recruiting and engineering is there's this trust building asset. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't build the trust with the engineers, they're going to think you're like this used car salesman, which is not what we want. We want to help used car salesmen. We don't want to be the used car salesman. So like when you're thinking about recruiting, I think it's really important to get to know your engineers as people. 
um, not just as like an asset to the company. And once you understand their personalities as well as the work that they do, it really helps you add more to the company as a whole. That's awesome. And it's really strategic on your part too. Thank you. Okay, so you have a nickname, Bean Town Ninja. <laughs> yes. Can you explain that a little bit? Totally, totally. So, um, back in like 2015, when I was on the agency side, we would have to do a ton of sourcing. And so we'd work like really long hour days and we'd come home and my buddy Franklin and I would sit on our couch and we'd watch American Ninja Warrior and we'd do sourcing. And, you know, after about a month or so of watching it, I was like, dude, I think I can do this. <laughs> so I started to climb around like my door frames in my Cambridge apartment and eventually after I exhausted that, found a ninja gym, uh, action athletics and started training with a lot of awesome people from the show. Um, and I actually got the opportunity to be a course tester for American Ninja Warrior in, uh, in season eight. So I went down to Philadelphia, I uh, did the steps, I did the barrel drop, and I ultimately fell in the water on the third obstacle. But like to this day, it's still one of like my proudest memories. Um, and so Beantown Ninja was my whole, you needed a sort of a brand yeah. to represent yourself. And you know, Boston's always been like a home to me. And I grew up in Worcester, you know, moving to Boston after college in, in, in UMass. So like Massachusetts is a big part of who I am, and I wanted to represent that as sort of my you know journey to becoming a ninja warrior. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, what have you learned from you know kind of getting into the American Ninja Warrior stuff? I'm sure you do like other competitions too, like races and stuff. So what have you learned and gained from doing all this? For sure. So I think like the physical aspect, Ninja Warrior is all about overcoming physical obstacles in your life. And I think this speaks volumes for a lot of people, right? Like we're all faced with obstacles in our day to day, um, whether it's something mental, like somebody, you know, being sick in your family or like your kids, like having some sort of thing that you have to get them to or just like the stressors of day to day life. And I think it's really easy to let those stressors bog us down and take over our day. So the biggest thing that I've sort of learned from American Ninja Warrior is being able to push through those obstacles, both physically and mentally, because like, when you're on the course, like running through the obstacles, like sure, a lot of it is physical training and you can practice that over and over and over again. But one of the biggest things you don't see is like when you hit that course, there's crowds of people. So your hands start sweating, you start to get really, really nervous and that's the whole mental aspect. So once you're kind of up on those big stages, like doing things like this, it really starts to calm you down when you come into day-to-day -day events. You're like, okay, well, this isn't as bad as going up the salmon ladder, running up a 14-foot wall. Like, let me just try and get through this next meeting. Right. And, you know, Puts go it all my into day. perspective for you. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I mentioned in the beginning that you do have your series on LinkedIn. Yes. It's called Wicked Wednesdays. Wicked Wednesdays. Wicked Wednesdays with the Beantown Ninja. Um, and on Wicked Wednesdays, you're usually giving tips to job seekers, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Thank and you. I really love these tips. Um, but without giving away any secrets, I guess, what's a, what's a tip that you like to share with fellow recruiters? For sure. I think the biggest thing, I realized this actually going to a college career fair recently, but a lot of the students that I was talking to, they have this perception that they have to have like a professional version of themselves and like their fun version of themselves. Mm -hmm. Like that person that comes out on Friday, Saturday, and then the person that shows up to work on Monday. Yeah. And I think this is like a really big misnomer, right? Because I think it's really important to be genuine and authentic to who you are all the time. Mm -hmm. Like we wanna work with that real raw you. We don't wanna work with this like boring, polished you that, you know, is inauthentic. Yeah. So I think if you can mirror those two and bring them together to kind of create this like symbiosis, I think that sort of will enhance your career more so. Because if you can be that fun-loving self at work, but also like, you know, get stuff done, I think you're gonna lead to like a lot of gains within the company. I love that, bringing your whole self to work, right? For sure. And I think it does go not just for, it goes for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. But recruiters, it's, that's your first touch point oh, a lot of times at a company. So you're, you bringing your whole self to work makes other people that you're interviewing, especially candidates, feel better Definitely. and feel like more comfortable. Um, so that's a really great tip. Awesome. But thank you so much, Colin. Oh yeah, my pleasure. For being on the Daily Draft. Woo! Check out his Wicked Wednesdays and subscribe to him. Or I mean, it's not YouTube. But yeah, follow, follow me on LinkedIn, on Colin LinkedIn. John Lunas. Can't awesome. miss it. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much, Aubrey. Appreciate it. Yay. Like, this is so